How's it going guys? My name is Dallas Ikea Infernus and welcome back to YouTube Unsolved. Today we're going to be covering the most dangerous stalker on the entire YouTube website. The most dangerous comet stalker, Jack. That's right, first we have Sandro Douglads, and then now we have Jack. What next? Jack Douglads? Sandrak? Doug Jackson lads? Basically, this is an old mystery which has been encountered and even actually talked about by a whole lot of other people. And in this video, we're going to be covering two stories that are probably the most descriptive and the most involved encounters with this particular stalker on YouTube. Make sure you tuck yourself in tonight with a nice nightlight, because otherwise, you're not going to be getting too much sleep. This wasn't all that long ago. It wasn't like this was in the 2008 period of time where all mysteries were basically started. This was only about five or six years ago when most of this stuff started happening. So it's really not that surprising that some weird, sus stuff started taking place. Subscribe to this channel for 10 years of good luck if you haven't already, and let's get into story number one. So basically it starts out in summer break, it's 2015, and this person is graduating from middle school going into high school, and this person had a camp, a summer camp that they were going to, where basically they had all kinds of random activities with some people who also went to their school as well, going there to just engage in fun stuff while they weren't having to go to school. So every single day after getting home from this summer camp, their favorite pastime was to just open up YouTube and watch their favorite subscribed YouTubers, which back then they described as being Smosh, CNanners, PewDiePie, and other gaming YouTubers that were the most relevant back then. And they liked to comment on every single one of the videos. It was a fun habit that they said, uh, which would sometimes result in even getting thousands of likes and replies, and even lots of uh, new online friends through that way of commenting on every single video that they'd watch. There'd be very few videos where they'd watch and they actually wouldn't leave a comment, even if it was really random to say in the video, just as a contribution. Now, of course, it was also pretty common to sometimes get comments or replies on their comments that didn't really make all that much sense. Maybe they were a little bit nonsensical or they were just weird in general. Maybe even just like a Karen or something that wouldn't get your joke of whatever you're saying. But there was a specific day in particular, and they remember this, as a very important day because this was the very beginning of the situation which would later go on to definitely leave a scarring impact on this person's life. They were watching a video by the YouTube channel Markiplier, you might have heard of that one, and they just come across this video really early, right after it was posted, even though they knew Markiplier's upload schedule every single day at a specific time, they were just going through YouTube and they just happened to see that this video was posted only like three minutes ago. So they got super excited, they go on to the video with the hopes of being one of the first comments. And of course they weren't one of the first comments because a whole lot of other people had the same idea. But anyways, they went there and they wanted to just write something random, so this submitter went and just wrote something similar to I love you or love you in all caps. Just some kind of variation of that term, very simple term, very supportive, of course. And they just commented on that video when it was very, very newly uploaded on Markiplier's channel. Now, the weird part starts when this comment got a reply after only a couple seconds of being posted on this brand new video, when the comment didn't ha even have any likes to it either. And it was from a user by the name of Jack. Just simply Jack, capitalized. Jack. And the first thing that this submitter noticed was the fact of how the profile picture was of one of the most eeriest photos of this black and white man just staring into your soul in the weirdest way ever seen. And all the comment said was, I love you too. Okay? Just that simple. Clearly the commenter should have known that the comment wasn't referring to them. And it was too random and shallow to have just been a joke reply. Didn't really make too much sense. And the submitter's original comment along with that weird reply from that Jack account didn't get any other engagement after that. And he didn't reply to the reply either, he just moved on with his life. And that was basically that. Which was apparently a very big mistake. The very next day the submitter wakes up and they just have a complete litany of messages from their YouTube DMs that are sent through email, back in the day YouTube actually allowed direct messaging to accounts or channels and it would basically be sent straight to your email connected to your account 
there was hundreds of these messages just piled up in the notifications. Literally 248 to be exact. And there were more being written by the minute that this person was actually seeing this. And of course, as you might predict, they were all from the user Jack. The same channel named Jack. And they all had the same type of message written in every single one. Out of the hundreds, they all said something similar. Like, I'm, or are you, hey, come over, I love you. Literally all in different variations, not, not a single one was the same or copied and pasted. This kind of showed that this person kind of had to have sent each message literally manually every single time. It would have been very hard to have set up something to automatically do all that, that specifically. So this, of course, got the submitter to want to look into this channel more, and they looked into it just to see that beyond the very sketchy, weird, and unbelievably creepy picture, there was nothing to it. There's no other information about this channel or who was running it. But they did have a significant amount of subscribers, though. Which was a very odd thing as well. And these messages kept coming throughout the entire day. There were hundreds of more messages of similar caliber being sent to the submitter all the way until the night. And the submitter had to literally mute their email app because they couldn't stand the amount of notifications that they were getting like every single second. But after that, after the messages stopped coming in after the first day, it was pretty much peaceful and nothing really too much happened for the next couple of days until on the person's channel they got another notification from their little notification thing on YouTube saying that someone commented in their discussion tab this time. Now it was once again Jack and they specifically said, Hey, you don't know me, but I know you now. I think you are cool. Wanna hang out sometime? So, after this, uh, clearly this person was getting kind of fed up with it. They just tried to ignore this really weird user named Jack from that point on, because there was really nothing else that you could do. Surprisingly, after doing this for some time, they came back to the discussion and saw that the comment had deleted itself, along with all of the hundreds of direct messages. They were all just gone. And now the submitter was very excited or happy about that, relieved that maybe this was just a troll and they got banned for other breaking terms of service reasons and they just went on with their life so literally weeks went on at this point without anything happening after that they basically completely forgot about the whole situation but summer was at that point coming to a close and it was the last couple of days at their camp basically at the end of summer they held this late night party type of thing where they hosted all kinds of fun things to do in this recreation center which was located in the park where the camp was held. It really wasn't that late at all, according to the submitter, it was probably only around 9 o'clock at night, but still late enough to where it was obviously dark. So it was a medium-sized recreational room, it was the biggest building in the entire park, and inside was the place where it was mostly just the music, just a general dance party type environment. The submitter and their friends were mostly hanging around the punch and the snack table, and everything was just going as to plan and great. Until the submitter got a buzz on their phone. And so they checked it to their not so happy surprise. It was Jack. Direct messaging him again through YouTube. Now this time it was not cryptic or inconcise. It was very direct. I do not appreciate you ignoring me. The submitter's name. I can see you through the window. Come out and meet me. I have a better party you can go to. To their own recount, everything started going quiet, they started feeling the sensation of tunnel vision, lightheadedness, and like everything was closing around them upon reading this message, as what you would imagine would happen. Their heart literally accelerated from 0 to 60 in 0 seconds. Now the entire room did have a bunch of windows that were facing one wall, which basically looked out to the parking lot. This is not like a rural area or anything like that, so it's not like there can't be anyone around to have witnessed some weirdo just spying on a bunch of kids during this party. But they looked outside the window to see the parking lot barely illuminated by the parking lot lights and then the street lights of the street that was behind the parking lot. And they saw literally no one there, not a single car parked in the parking lot, no one standing around in the parking lot or any other place. They were looking through the window which was in a particular dark corner of the party, this way they would feel more hidden or secure when they looked out. 
there's just nothing out there. But obviously, this submitter was not going to take any chances because clearly at this point this individual had demonstrated the fact that they now know where they are and therefore pose a physical threat in real life. So they showed one of the camp counselors, one of the female camp counselors, this message on their phone, told them all about it. They were decently friends with this camp counselor, so they knew each other quite well. And aside from the cliche type thing where, where you think in a movie they would just dismiss it or make some funny excuse, oh, that's nothing, don't worry about it, oh, whatever. No, they actually took it seriously as you would imagine they should. And they went outside with a couple camp counselors as well with flashlights looking around while the rest of the party continued. And they took quite a while to even get back. Longer than what you would imagine or have expected, as what the submitter said. And when they came back, they basically said, oh, nothing was there, it was all clear, just go back to having fun and everything's all fine. So that's exactly what they did. And they said it pretty convincingly, but the submitter did notice that there was something weird about the way they said it. Maybe it was just that their whole attitude about it just seemed a little bit off when they said it. Maybe they seemed a tiny bit nervous. It was only years down the line when after this person had graduated high school and they were just wandering and they met the camp counselor in the streets again, they actually were in mid-conversation when this camp counselor told him what actually happened and they were out in the park looking around with their flashlights with the other counselors and at one point after searching around for about a couple minutes they aimed their flashlights at a fence and they just saw for a brief second someone's leg hopping over the fence for literally only one second. So because of this, obviously that proves that someone was there. But they waited until the party was over, it was already getting close to being over anyways to call the police. The police came and they did an investigation. They didn't find anything except for the slightly dented fence where someone had clearly hopped over it. Of course, the police never give you a satisfying ending. No offense, police. But that's it. Little did this submitter know that they were just to be one of the many, far too many, victims and encounterers of the user by the name of Jack. Very disturbing stuff. But just wait till we see what's behind door number two. Also known as story number two. This was submitted by a person by the name of Keely, who is a female. So basically they started off with this story being quite blunt about it. Hello, my name is Keeley, and I was stalked by an account named Jack for four years. So this was all started back when Keeley used to upload their essays and video projects for their college course to YouTube in order to be able to share it with their teachers. And also they said that they thought that it wouldn't be too much harm and also maybe even getting some views on them if she was lucky but she doesn't think that way now. So all throughout her online college courses for history and literature, there would be video essays, kind of like video reports, that she would make upload to her channel, and she had lots of these on her channel, just publicly posted them, and sometimes they got some decent amount of views, but most of the time they just didn't get any views, maybe a couple comments, mostly of which would be her friends, and sometimes a teacher is commenting on them as well. But once again, we come back to her remembering a very specific day because it was the very day that it would be the beginning of her life starting to go downhill for four straight years. It was October 14th, 2015. So she had uploaded a literature project video essay on Hamlet, which she was about to submit to one of her teachers through the online course when she got a comment on the video because of course she uploaded all her videos as public. And the comment was by the name of Jack. Nice video. Wanna talk? So, by what Keeley described, she was more aware of what the profile picture was. It was an artistic depiction of Jack the Ripper, a 19th century serial killer. So she didn't really know how to reply to this because it was kind of an awkward thing to say. So she just plainly replied with a smile face and a thanks. And that was it. Now Jack replied in mere seconds after she replied to his reply, which was very startling and weird considering that it took her like seven hours to get around to replying to his reply. Yes, we share the same interests. I too enjoy Hamlet. Would you like to discuss it? So she didn't reply to this one because, in her own words, she was not in the mood to make friends with some random internet stranger. I probably wouldn't be either, but that's kind of what my, I do every single day. 
How's it going? And she found that it was also odd the way that they phrased it as she was interested in Hamlet, as it, it should have been quite obvious that she was just making a video essay on it. So nothing of drastic excitement really happened after that, except for the fact that she continued to upload her occasional video essays to the channel, and she started to notice that, subtly, every single video, she would start to receive a new comment instantaneously after being posted from Jack, with something new and creative to say every single time. Now this would happen after seconds of the video being posted, which was very odd as well, considering that, well, her channel only had a couple of subscribers, and once again, the same situation, every single comment was pretty much a different variation. What she said scared her was her observation of how the comments started to grow more hostile and rash over time. Now, they would start with something simple like, hey, I'm up to talking, do you want to talk? Want to. Did you see what I wrote? I think I like you. I like you. I love you. Don't make me upset. Now it got so bad and annoying and disturbing that she decided to just outright disable all the comments on all of her videos. Finally someone makes a good choice. And she also didn't care that much about her channel anyway, so it didn't really matter too much. Literally all she used it for was to just share the videos to her professor so she would have it graded that way. And that's exactly how things started to escalate. The professor was the person who would start noticing these comments right before she disabled them, and talked to her about it one day saying that he thought it was very bizarre and very strange. And he suggested to just straight up private all the videos, if not even delete her entire YouTube channel, and, just, and from that point on just submit them personally through email. So that's exactly what she started doing. She privated all the videos on her channel, she was no longer making any public videos. Now what the submitter specifically told the professor that she thought was the most disturbing was how she started receiving comments from Jack similar to lines of, I like you, sweetie. Your voice is cute. When she literally never showed her voice or face, and her channel name was just that of her old gaming username. Which means there could have really been no way that anyone should have known who she was at all. But unfortunately, regardless of this, it was just the start. The instant that she privated all of her videos, almost by the day, she started receiving envelopes in her physical location mailbox full of these printed out and cut pieces of comments which were by the same username and each envelope was sent to her address every single week on the same day saturday and they would all be signed her name at the front of the letter in cursive writing now these letters were full of these comments 20 to 50 each one as she said now these comments were the exact same type of thing. Each one was different but similar, like, hey, hello, how are you? Where are you? Don't do this. Come back. I miss you. I love you. Do you see me? Hi, sweetie. Don't ignore me. Okay, <laughs> what the frick? Nah, sorry, I'm moving to a different planet. Sorry, Elon Musk, take me to Mars right now. So every Saturday she would expect a new envelope to be sent, like clockwork it was. She would get a new letter full of these comments, and obviously she never shared her name or address anywhere on the internet, so... And she also didn't alert the authorities about any of this happening because she didn't perceive any real threat at that given time, despite it being very weird. Well, you were on a good- you were almost on a good roll. You were making some good choices, but now I don't know what you're doing. Now, the same thing started happening. Over time, every single week, the hostility and hastefulness of the comments in these envelopes would start to gradually increase. This person was literally commenting somewhere, printing the page out, cutting it 20 to 50 times, putting them all in these envelopes every week. And this kept happening for three years. Not a single day off was ever missed every Saturday for three years. Now this person eventually straight up moved out with her boyfriend to an entire another state. After she had graduated from college and started her career, she had collected these hundreds of comments in these dozens of letters and basically just piled them up in this trash corner in the new garage, in her new house, an entirely different place far away. After that, it had been a whole six months since she had received any letters and that was a six month period of grace or maybe even you could describe the eye of the storm, and also just happened that she was walking past this stack of 
old letters from Jack that she didn't even throw away for some reason, or report to anyone, she started getting a lot of anxiety again. Only a couple days after that, it was exactly Saturday, once more she received a very beat up Amazon looking package made out of cardboard, put together with masking tape and staples, with once again the same cursive writing written on the top of it, with her name, Keeley. It was really light, didn't seem like there was much in it, she opened it up, and inside of this package it was a Polaroid picture, snapped with one of those disposable cameras or something like that, that you could get from anywhere for only like 10 bucks or something. And it was a picture of the outside of her house from her backyard, not front yard, at night, with seemingly the center of it being her window where she slept. On the other side of this Polaroid picture was yet another cut and pasted comment from Jack, simply saying, I love when they run. Burn the house down. <laughs> I got chills. You know that? I'm not, that's involuntary. It's probably one of the actually most disturbing things on this entire series. This is the season finale. Now, it was at this point where it was obviously the last straw. And Keeley finally decided to get the police involved. Of which did nothing, of course. Well, <laughs> yeah. Great. Well, it was probably the wind. Well, they couldn't do anything except take in the hundreds of envelopes in for tests, of which they found no fingerprints and no other evidence of anything anymore at all, of course. <laughs> Why? Obviously not. Just the same handwritten signature from Jack. And that was the last time that this person, Keeley, heard from Jack ever again. Alright! Who is Jack? Well, this was very deep. And crazy. Ridiculous. I mean, what the crap? Alright, what the crap, Jack? Well, Jack seems to basically stalk someone all the way up to the point where they get the police involved. And that's usually the common stopping point between these two experiences. And there have been so many other testimonies, experiences, encounters with Jack across the entire internet. These are just two that were sent in from frequent unsolved watchers of this channel. What we can determine out of all this is that the overall peak from all the observations of all the different encounters and especially the time frames of these two stories that the overall area of time that Jack was operating in mostly was in between 2015 and 2017. This final story going all the way up towards the beginning of 2020. Freaking crap. Now Jack has almost 5,000 subs, no videos, and no signs of ever having any. This means that this person had to have commented a lot and engaged with an unholy amount of people in this exact same way. And maybe people subbed to their channel because of all the amount of comments they saw just lingering around YouTube throughout all those years. And it's also not certain that this is the original, actual Jack account. There could be plenty of others that this person behind this entire scheme could be running as backup, but this one happens to match all of the parameters, so we're gonna go with this. Now some might argue this is an early example of just a basic comic book, considering the detail of them being able to reply and comment within only a couple seconds, which doesn't seem like a very normal thing to be able to do, but this would not at all explain the fact on how every single encounter and experience of all of this person's comments and replies are all personalized and different every single time. Regardless of whether or not some kind of bot technology could make this possible, it is also speculated that because of this one account, YouTube decided to outright remove the entire direct message capability of their website, all only just because of Jack. But of course, they never said that. And now on to the more sinister aspects. The fact that this person going by the Elias of Jack and having a profile picture of a 19th century serial killer who only went and killed females after stalking them isn't too much of a delightful touch. And it also should be noted that even though only the second story that we did today was submitted by a female, it was by far the longest and most dedicated example of one of Jack's stalkings. Not Jack and the Beanstalk. No. Not that. Indicating that they were more than averagely interested in Keeley. And another common pattern seems to arise as Jack tends to become more angered, aggressive, and even starts to begin behavior of physically stalking someone in real life after they ignore one of their comments or requests. And maybe this is something else to consider. If you don't ignore Jack, who knows what they're trying to get out of you? 
But if you do ignore him, well, I think these stories speak for themselves. Other than that, there's no real way to determine who exactly is behind this very disturbing and soul-staring profile. And out of all of the other encounters with the incidents of this account, not really any seem to be within the last two to three years. So it's really not known what the ultimate intention of whoever was running the Jack account is, whether it's to lure people, abduct them, or just to scare. It's quite clear that, at least from these two stories, there is a real person behind it who was at one point at large on YouTube as one of the most prevalent and dangerous serial stalkers. The fact that a comet conversation on the internet can result in a person following and watching you in the darkness is enough to personally make me want to wear pull-ups again. And as far as we know, Jack still exists to this day, but remains quiet. So with all of that being covered, this mystery is still unsolved. And yeah, that is the mystery behind Jack. So that's really all I wanted to cover in this episode. This was the season finale of season two of YouTube Unsolved. If you see a user by the name of Jack, well, I can't really say what to do. You can't ignore him, but if you do talk to him, who knows what, what's gonna go wrong and I mean, <laughs> This guy could be like an FBI trying to figure out maybe maybe these people who submit these stories secretly are committing crimes. I'm not going to accuse you of anything. But anyways, that is the entire episode. Hopefully you didn't get too disturbed by it. But yeah, uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. This was YouTube Unsolved. Season 2. Goodbye.